Welcome, everybody, to Privacy Kitchen. I'm really, really excited to be speaking with Kelvin Fernandez from Nilg AI. I do have a look at his YouTube channel. There's some fantastic videos there. We, we, this is part one of a three-part uh, series on uh, understanding AI. So do join us for the others as well. We'll crack on with the first part. So, Kelvin, do you want to introduce yourself and your business and your name from the business and the channel Perfect. as well? Perfect, for sure. So I'm Kelvin Fernandez. I'm the co-founder and CEO of Nilg AI. And, well, I have a... a background a PhD in machine learning. So I started very, very excited around AI, the technical topics about AI. And as we, as I did consulting with new AI as before as an independent consultant, I kind of realized that the like training AI models is like a solved problem more or less. Yeah. Uh, but the difficult part is to make them make actual money and be integrated into business. So the company itself, the, the vision of the company evolved from just being a consulting firm that does development of these models into actually we are trying to create the standard of uh, adoption of AI uh, companies. Right. So right. Our, our whole focus is mostly processes, businesses, and how they should embrace AI and how, what is the right way to embrace AI. And we call yep. this like business-centric approach to AI. And it's a four-step process or, or you've got, exactly. you've you created. And I, and I think your YouTube channel is fun. Um, I'll ask you to say a bit more about it. But what I found really good about it is exactly that, that you're, exp you're bridging that business and technical, uh, which is very, very difficult to do. And I think it's, a, yeah. it's, a, it's a, do you want to tell us a bit more about your channel, which is the roaring success? Yes, yes actually, our channel, just like the way we interact with our company, what we try to do is narrow down each and every decision someone working in AI should make into something that, so, you know, if you don't have technical experience, you should be able to decide yeah. at the same level of performance that someone with the technical experience, what type of data you need, what type of models you need, what shape KPIs you should track, what are the risks that are involved and how to mitigate them. So we try to like standardize all decisions that yeah. any company will make around AI. About the name of the company, so yeah. it's yeah. AI. Nilga is, is the largest antelope in India, and it means the blue bull, okay? And blue is often associated with technology and with businesses, right? The two yeah. things together. And a bullish market for me is something that is growing. So for me, it's like growing with AI, okay? Yeah, 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 fantastic. And I, I do think the it's so good, your channel and that your approach to AI, um, because you are super technical as you say in your intro video on your channel and can go as geeky as anybody but it's it's a everybody having to deal with ai is or rather there are so many people who aren't technologists who have to deal with ai people from from even you get people from security and it who are good on technology but they're not engineers say for example yes data and, scientists. and as ai keeps evolving yeah, and it keeps getting more democratized. We will see more people getting into AI, and more uh, and less technical people getting into AI and having to make those decisions by themselves. Yeah. So I think it has been like a personal and professional realization that the difficult part around here is not the technical part, it's not the software development. It's actually understanding processes, understanding people and how and psychology and how people react yeah. to things, yeah. to things, and then making sure these these technologies align with people's priorities and process Perfect. priorities. I think that's, that's also, there's a lot of parallels with privacy, which is such a complex area that very yeah. few have a full understanding of. And, and, and also it mirrors Privacy Kitchen, what we're about. So, so welcome, welcome indeed. So should we start off with what is AI? And I'm not sort of thinking of like, you know, the, the sort of reactive or, or, or memory, what have you. I'm thinking more around... ML compared to AI, NLP, mm -hmm. LMs, generative AI, these sort of things. And maybe some examples of what is AI that people are used to and what isn't mm -hmm. AI that people might think is. Okay. Okay, so let me give you two definitions about AI, okay? The first one is more, let's say, technical on mm -hmm. what a system I will say qualifies an AI. And the second one is more useful for business right. managers, okay? Yeah. So the more technical one is... For me, intelligence, and if you go to the Wikipedia definition, is something that senses, so understands what's going around, mm. then processes that information into some for sort of knowledge or abstraction, and then acts, okay? Yep. So for me, any system that is capable of sensing the environment, understanding what's going on around it, and acting mm -hmm. with a special focus on acting will be intelligent, okay? Right, right. The, then the artificial part, I think it's just... You know, artificial is human made, which doesn't right. add much to anything. Yep. Yep. So what I like more is machine intelligence, which is, because a machine is something that accelerates a process. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. This is a process of becoming intelligent. Okay, so yeah. of getting this uh, 
acting yeah, machine intelligence is a, exactly. is a really good one yeah yeah but of course when i explained that business manager said up saying like okay but what can i do with a system that can sense abstract and yeah so i found this new definition which i read from the book prediction machines uh, by ajay agrawal much more actionable which is and it doesn't cover all ai on in, <laughs> on its entireness but it's pretty useful which is ai nowadays is it equals predictions okay right so ai is just about predictions okay yeah and predictions are simply more data. So if you have this data, yes. now you have a new piece of data. Okay. Yeah. And as a manager, what can you do with new data? They make better decisions. So the whole process of AI is predicting to improve decision making, making predictions to improve decision making. And that's it. As simple as that. And Fantastic. that could apply that could apply to healthcare with yeah. diagnosing a patient. That could apply to your customer journey, knowing who is going to leave, knowing which products match which needs, that matches to your logistics operation, knowing about the delays of suppliers. So if you put everything under the umbrella of prediction, like everything and prediction as more data that allows you to make better decisions, I yeah. think like everything starts to fit. Into yeah, something. yeah, yeah. I think that's a really good way to put it. It's there's also there's a there's such a um, I like the machine intelligence part as well. There's a lot of humanization of AI that, that a lot of people are uncomfortable with and and having it more yeah. as a sort of understandable to us I think machine intelligence is a really good really great one and I love your I love your definition about the and, and also the 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 legal definition in the EU AI Act if it is the final version that we've got is all around that inferring from the so, so as you say you're sensing making a decision and then acting on it and it's all around inferring and being able to have an effect on on virtual or real worlds. I think that's a really good way to look at it. So what about the difference between machine learning, say, and AI or machine learning and NLP and LLMs and ML? Okay. So for me, AI is all of this umbrella of uh, sensing, abstracting, and acting. Okay. Yeah. ML yeah. is especially so it's, it's focused on the understanding part and improving part with the data. So Right. ML basically brings the capability of improving over time as you train more the models and training is seeing more data. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Then, like if you ask me if you ask me this question 20 years ago, all of these things like computer vision, NLP, uh, recommender systems, it will be all segregated into different areas. But as MLA, as machine learning became better on learning on different types of data, you see that all the strategies around NLP, computer vision, et cetera, it started to converge into, into machine learning, unless yeah, yeah. into signal processing or yeah. linguistics as it was on NLP. So for me, NLP is simply nowadays, basically machine learning or AI, where the inputs, so where, where what you see, what you observe, or what you produce, what you are, is text. Right, right. And computer vision is the same, but with images. Yeah, yeah. But the type of techniques we use to build these models nowadays are converging into deep learning models and deep learning models have evolved into what we call large language models, which is simple NLP models. So natural language processing yeah. models that now also handle vision too, uh, because everything is merging and fusing yeah, together, absolutely. right? Yeah. Um, but that they are pre they are so large that they have been and have been pre-trained with so much data that they can basically understand. I won't say or understand, but they can basically create text or create a sense around text on any general purpose task okay yeah and right. finally on this on the definitions bit um you mentioned sort of neural networks and and deep learning which, i mean in a way like software eats the world it's like you know ml's eating ai it's like with how much of how much of ai that we all talk about involves neural networks and deep learning is there a difference between those two and what what are they Yes. So we have artificial intelligence inside AI. We have machine learning. We, inside yeah. machine learning, we have deep learning, and inside deep learning, we have large language models. Right. Okay. Nowadays, the current trend is, like, we deal, we treat AI and machine learning as, as synonyms, because of the current, because of the yeah. ha, the huge impact machine learning had in the last few years, okay, in the last yeah. few decades, maybe. There are other areas of AI other than mm -hmm. machine learning. For example, planning and scheduling. Right. Okay. Which 
is starting to be touched by machine learning, but it's still on a separate track. Right. And it's mainly about planning stuff, logistics, you know, doing a set of actions, which again is also in sensing like how is the world, understanding where do we a right plan and then acting. Yep. So it fits the same definition, but as now it doesn't involve that much of learning, the learning process as it is of, of all the combinatorial and all the potential combinations of plans that you can execute. So that I will feel it as another area, right? And then there is something that people also tend to put apart, which is causal reasoning, which is asking what if uh, this comes as a consequence of this other thing, which it's still not as integrated with machine learning as it was before. But as machine learning is big, it's getting more successful, the bubble of machine learning starts increasing yeah. inside the bubble of AI. And now almost everything in AI has some form of learning. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. What would people be used to using like Siri or Alexa or or whatever people are doing where there might be AI and maybe more more sort of common AI? What sort of in terms of people's daily lives might they be interacting with AI without really realizing it? Nowadays almost I will say with everything that you can imagine. For example, let's say that you ask Google Maps about how should I go from point A to point B. That's something very traditional computer science that's a very traditional computer science task. But estimating the time is evolving more into machine learning. Right. right, depending on the conditions, right. translation. If you go to Google Translate, that is also a form of machine a form it. of AI. Um, so more and more tasks nowadays are being migrated from traditional software engineering to more AI, especially processes that are very uncertain and ambiguous to yeah. define. So everything around language nowadays tends to be AI. If you unlock your phone with I don't know face recognition. Then the, right. that's an AI, right? So the very same moment you 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 log into your phone with biometrics, yeah. even with your fingerprint or with your face, that's AI. Every time you get a recommendation on Amazon, that's an AI model. Um, Fantastic. That's amazing. So we're all interacting with it all the time. And so, yeah. in terms of organizations that you're uh, consulting with and working with, who, which, which sort of organizations do you find are using AI more? And within those organizations, which teams are using AI more? Okay. So we have like. Two groups, right? At least on, on our customer base. And so maybe I'm biased towards this answer, but it's basically what the experience that we have. We have startups that are building an entire product around AI. Yeah. That's like their value proposition, yeah. like a product that wasn't achievable 10 years ago, but now with AI we can do it. Okay. Yep. And then we have mainly large organizations right. like big corps. Yeah. that are optimizing internal processes with yeah. AI because they have the required scale such that if the AI optimizes, I don't know, 10%, it pays off the investment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. yeah. As AI becomes more of a, as a, so AI is becoming more of a user interface with information, right? Especially right. with yes. Yes. And LLMs. As this happens, since everybody has to handle in some way or another with information, I have seen more smaller companies mm. working with AI. Actually, as Neil, I always say that we were kind of hypocrites because we sell this idea that AI is amazing, but we didn't use AI internally for our processes, right? right. Uh, but with this advent of uh, LLMs, it's way easier because you need much less data to produce AI-generated uh, process or AI-enabled processes. Yep. So now we everything we do, like, I don't know, pre-formatting requests for proposals, uh, right. content repurposing, et cetera, we do it with AI. So the frontier between who can use AI and who cannot use AI or who should be mm -hmm. used or who shouldn't use it, it's getting more fuzzy. Yeah. It's getting more fuzzy. And in, term, in terms of which which groups, is it, is it is it sales? Who's driving it? Is it sales and marketing driving it? But who's, who's actually, are they using it themselves or are they driving it and then the tech teams are bringing it in or is it a, yes. is it a matrix? I will say there are two main stakeholders pushing for AI in non-tech companies. On tech companies, most yeah. likely it's data teams, CEOs, yeah. et cetera. But in non-tech companies, you have innovation departments. Mm -hmm. Right. Because yes. that's their job, like try yeah. innovative stuff. And But it's more exploratory. It's not that much of like, let's change our entire paradigm to AI. It's more like, what can AI do or do? cannot do in these departments. So you see a lot of innovation departments are using AI, and then you see sales and marketing, like the first adopters uh, of AI yeah, in any yeah. company, 
And the reasoning is very simple. They have a lot of data, okay? It's oftentimes yeah. personal data, but it's a lot of uh, yeah. data. The most risky data, but it's where yeah. they have uh, larger volumes. And mainly because of the strong adoptions they have of, infra of IT infrastructure, like CRMs and these kind of mm -hmm. tools, now they have a lot of data. And the second reason is that because it's pretty easy to measure the return on investment. And, and you're, yeah. you, are, yeah. you are managing money directly. You know, it's sales, it's, you know, it's direct campaigns where in one month or two months, you can assess what is the impact of it. Yeah. And they get the KPI in every campaign on every exactly. point in their pipeline. Yeah, so yeah. It's so easy for them to iterate with this yeah. that it's the... It's the first department that tends to, yeah, uh, to look after AI, and they have been trying everything like to to stretch each dollar on, yeah. on their marketing, right? Like I don't know different type of digital marketing, like uh, I don't know different product offerings, etc. So at the point where they stretch every feature in the product, every cent on their cost, mm. it's about you know how we make the whole system more efficient, Absolutely. and then AI comes to comes to 